everyone, it's Laura here, and um, today we're starting a brand new stream. Um, this is a new series, and uh, we will be working for the next uh, quite some time, hopefully, um, in the book Color Morphia by Kirby Rosans. And um, so this will be our next Tuesday morning stream. Um, so as, as we go forward, we're just going to complete this page um, in a series the way I did with the last page that we were working on every Tuesday. So this is the page that you guys voted on. Um, I'm a huge fan of Kirby's work, so I thought this would be really fun to do together. Um, we will be using pencils for the main large area. However, for today we will be using um, this craft paint on the background. So before we get started, um, if you're new to my channel, this is a color and chat channel. So I do chat with the live, uh, the live chat, um, the fibs if you will. So I'm just going to take a moment here and say hi. Hi, Kenny. Um, hi, Leslie. Welcome. Hi, Rhea. <laughs> nice to see you. Hi, Shannon. Hey, hey. It's early for you, isn't it? Gosh. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Cassandra. Um, so I'm going to, as as more people say hello, I'll just be saying hi here and there. Hi, Pickle, Jody. <laughs> so, um, as we get started here, I just want to kind of um, throw out the list of things that I'm going to be using today. Um, I'll update the description after the video is over with all the links to the uh, stuff that you can buy. So first thing that I do when I'm painting in my book, this is in the book, I haven't detached the page. So what I'm going to do is I have this piece of Bristol, it's a large piece of Bristol. So I'm just going to slide that underneath that page there. This will protect the page on the, um, on the reverse, uh, like on, like, behind it rather um, and I'm also going to be using this artist tape to tape off the page that's next to it so let's do that first who else popped in hi Darla welcome hello hello yeah an exciting background <laughs> yeah so we're gonna be using polychromos for the main uh, figure, if you will, the, the foreground. Um, but for the background, since we had discovered in our last video that these craft acrylic paints are really great to pencil over, so what I do is I just kind of guess, you know, I go a little over. And uh, this is low tack artist tape, so you can use any kind of low tack tape that works for you. I don't recommend high tack tape, it can tear the paper. So what I'm doing is I'm just lining it up, and I'm going to use, where's my bone folder? I have this bone folder, it's just a bookmaking tool, I'm just going to use that to kind of press that into the paper. If you don't have a bone folder, you can just use your hands. I just like using this, I feel like it's a little more precise than my fingers. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let's see, I'm just reading the chat. Hello, hello, just making sure I didn't um, miss anybody. Okay. Alright, so that should be good. I'm just going to fold that tape under so I'm not sticking to the table everywhere. That tape will just help me prevent any spilling over into the next page. Can't guarantee it won't happen, but that's a better bet than just leaving it there. <laughs> we'll see how tidy I am after the episode is done. Okay, so um, the other things you're going to need to get started, I have here just a random selection 
of my acrylic paint brushes. So I'm gonna run through um, what I have here and uh, we may not use all of them, but I'm gonna say why I chose them. So I have this big gigantic brush. This is an old brush. It used to be a watercolor brush and then it got downgraded to an acrylic brush after a dear friend of mine used it for acrylics by accident. <laughs> but it, it's still useful. Um, this is great for really large areas. I don't know if I'm going to need it. This doesn't have a huge amount of space, but I just like having one big wash brush at hand. The next two brushes that I have here, one is called a filbert brush, and it's an oval shaped tip. Great for um, soft, big like uh, cloudy shapes and things like that. So that's why I chose this guy. He's fairly large. This is meant for acrylic. Um, it's a number six filbert. Um, it's one of those long handle brushes. Okay, the next one that I have here is a um, angle tip. Uh, this is an angle shader or an angle bright. And um, the reason I like this is it allows you to get in tight spaces really well while still allowing you a lot of paint on your brush. So I actually have one here and then I have um, a smaller angle as well. So I'll be probably using both of these because this is a really detailed edge here. And then two other brushes I just pulled from my collection are two rounds. I have this older round which has gotten a whole lot of usage and love so it's a little bit less pointy if you will. It's still very useful and it does come to a point when it's wet but it's actually a little bit frayed and used like the edges are a little softer. I find that actually nice for blending cloudy shapes so that's why I pulled this one. And then I do have a fairly new ang uh, uh, round brush. Um, this comes to a really nice point and uh, will allow me to get in the really tight tiny little spaces that we have. And then the last brush I have here, I'm not sure if I'll use it, but sometimes I do. This is called a round blender, I believe. Um, and what it is, it, well, let me see, actually, yes, it says it on the thing. So this is a round blender, and it's great because it's small and short and um, allows you to kind of scumble. Um, so I'm going to be showing you some techniques today on how to kind of blend your acrylics to make soft, cloudy shapes. Um, let me see, while well, I haven't been paying attention, let's see who's popped in. We've got, hi Zeely, hi Emily, welcome. Okay, so those are the brushes I pulled and why I pulled them. We may not use them all, but I just wanted to kind of run through that before we go. Let me actually push this up. Okay, so... The other things I have here, of course, are the paints that I'll be using. Again, I have more paint than I probably will use, but I'm just going to show you what I have. Um, I pulled a whole bunch of Galaxy colors. Some of these are brand new, so I'll need to open them. Um, so I have the Lamp Ebony Black. Um, these are all the Deco Art Americana paints, which um, we tested in my last stream and found that they take pencil beautifully. So I thought this would be another fun way to use them as a background um, in our coloring book to kind of like make it quicker to get going, um, but we can still pencil over it if we want to. Um, anyway, uh, the next color I have here is Ultra Blue Deep. I'm not sure if I'll use all these, but I'm just going to list them out. I have Ultramarine Blue. For the purples, I have Dioxazine Purple and Purple Pizzazz. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Kenny. Oh, you've already done it. Yes, so you know the scumbling is really fun. We're going to probably do that today. Um, that's great that you already know it, though. So we have here Tropical Blue and Teal Mint. This is probably my favorite color of all time. If you've been watching me, you probably know. Um, and then we have here, oh, this is a different brand. I'm sorry. Um, this is matte acrylic paint by a different brand. Um, I think it'll work the same way. Um, I really like this color. I'm not sure if we'll use it, but it's called Cascadia. This is by the Folk Art Plaid brand. And then, of course, we have our white for the stars. This is uh, Snow Titanium White. And I <laughs> I bought this 
a long time ago and have never used it. It was on sale at Hobby Lobby. This It was not $4.99, although that's the regular price. It's Glitterific Folk Art. And I don't know, I just thought of Jody when I saw this. And I was like, maybe we'll use this today. I, have, I, I bought it on a whim. I think it was like really deeply discounted. And I just, I don't know. I mean, gosh, guys, like look at that sparkle. So I don't know. We'll see if we use it. Let's see. Aww. I hope you feel better soon, Emily. I hope it heals up. <laughs> yeah, Leslie. Alright, so before we get started, I do want to remind you guys, um, if you do have a specific question for me, don't forget to put it in all caps so I see it. Um, oh, the other thing you're going to need, of course, is some water. I have here water in an old cup. I reuse my cups over and over again. So this was actually a cup that I had at a party that I took home with me because I don't, they weren't recycling. So I, I am silly and I take my non-recycled cups home. And then um, I also have some paper towels. So um, just in case. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I do actually have also a palette that I've used in previous videos um, or just a previous project. So I'm going to reuse my palette as well. Um, so let's see if I can get it in the shot so you guys can see me mixing. Let's move all these bad boys over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emily. <laughs> oh, another thing I have dirt, uh, <laughs> is um, I have this uh, spray mister bottle. I'm going to be using this throughout the video to keep my acrylics wet if needed. I just spray the palette down and uh, keep everything moist and that way it doesn't dry out. Did I forget anything else? Anything over there? No? I think we're good. Okay. Um... <laughs> Aww. Well, yeah, hopefully the, the tonsillectomy will help. Um, let's see. <laughs> Leslie, it's because she loves sparkle. That's why we think of her. <laughs> I'm just being snoopy and reading the chat. Okay, let me put my brushes. Where am I going to put them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like my sound effects, Emily. I'm in a silly mood this morning, so we'll just uh, try try to bear with me on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I apologize ahead of time. Let me make sure I'm in screen. This is kind of crooked. Okay. Do I need to? I am zoomed out all the way. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out first by just putting some colors on my palette. I do want this to be like a nebula, so I'm going to add some color. But I think to get started at first, um, especially around the clock, I want it to be really dark. Um, just to make the, the clock and the, all the florals and stuff really pop out and have high contrast. So I'm going to start out first with my lamp ebony black. That's I don't know if this is going to focus. Hey, look at that. It focused for me. So this is the one I'll be starting out with. So let it focus back. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm going to give it a good shake. This one I've used already, so it's about half full. <laughs> See. Come on. Um, good morning, B. Welcome. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for coming, guys. Hello, hello. <laughs> um. <laughs> you have no idea. Hmm? Hmm, pickle? Okay, so I'm just going to throw some of this on here. Oh, that's fun. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to spray that down with just a spritz of water. I don't think you guys can see my palette super well. Unfortunately, I'm being restricted here by the setup. But, um, <laughs> a 
Okay, and now to get started, I'm going to, before I put any other colors on my palette, I'm just going to actually get going with this. So I'm wetting my brush so that it's damp, but not dripping wet. Um, there's some moisture in there, but it's not like dripping or causing any mayhem. <laughs> and I'm going to dip my brush in the, um, the paint. It's pretty much straight from the tube. It does have a little spritz of water. And I'm going to just start in first with working on the small detail close to the clock. So we're just going to kind of put some black all around the edges here. And we may work in some other colors later, but I just kind of want to focus on the one color and get that going. So I'm using my, and see, if you go over the lines, it's totally okay. Don't fuss too much. Um, I'm using a, oh, that's hard to read, a number eight round. But as long as it, as the round comes to a point, that's the key there. I'm going to move my palette a little just so I don't drag my hand through the water. I mean, through the, through the paint. Um, so we are just going carefully, but if you go over the lines or if you make a mistake, don't worry because this this paint does accept um, color pencil really beautifully, so we can always fix it later. Okay, so as I trail off here, I'm just going to kind of dab around not worry about making a straight line here on the edge. So that's about how far I'm going to go away from everything here. Um, yeah, Kyle, I'm looking forward to the new one too. Um, I believe if you're looking for who has done a review on it already, Sammy from Color and Chat with Sammy. Um, she already has a flip through of the brand new book out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on. <clears throat> uh oh, I hope I'm not uh, getting a sore throat. I don't think so. I think it's just, I haven't been using my voice that much today. Um, <laughs> excuse me guys, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the new Kirby book as well. <clears throat> but this is a book I have not colored in. And I am trying to, along with Shannon and Christina, we're trying to work in our uncolored books this year and make sure that all of them get a little love. So... Um, <laughs> before I buy any new books, I'm going to be working in all of them that have not gotten a little bit of attention, and, uh, yeah, it'll be good. Um, is it, yeah, March 17th? Thanks, Shannon. Um, <laughs> yeah, Pickle, there's so many beautiful pages. Um, in general, you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I I have colored quite a lot of Kirby's pages already. So, in general, I'm just a big fan. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have not colored in this book, this particular book. You can also find this image in Phantomorphia, however, it's cropped. It's It's not... Um, the full image. So that's why I went with this version in this book. Because the other book has some of it cut off at the top here. Not a big fan of that. I don't know why. I like it to be like fully visible, I guess. So you can just see I'm just taking my time, going around the edge doesn't really have to be perfect, but we're just kind of making it easy for ourselves later. And I really do love having this black background right behind the clock. I feel like it'll really make this whole thing stand out. 
And I'm thinking about doing some glowy effects. There's this little lantern here, which I want to do a glow. So I can show you guys how I do it that, um, on that. I was also thinking, there's like a dragonfly. Where is he? There's some, here he is. There's one there. I was thinking about maybe making him glow, even though he's a dragonfly and not like a firefly. I mean, it is sort of like, it's our coloring book. We can do whatever we want with it. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you've just ordered this one. Oh, he scares you, Leslie. I'm surprised. I thought he was super popular. Um, yeah, I would love to see what you do with it. That's cool. Um, I don't know why I love his books so much. I just think they are... His, his style of artwork is so different from mine. I think that's why I'm attracted to it. It's such a challenge for me. Um, here um Kyle as long as you're not using a whole lot of water it will not warp um if, so, if, if you water down the paint you saw I just put a spritz of water and I have a little bit of water on my brush before I dip it in the paint but I'm not like mixing the paint with a whole lot of water so no it's not going to warp um the more water you the water is what makes paper buckle but um, as long as you are pretty judicious with the water amount, you'll find that uh, it won't buckle. If it does buckle, though, I found I, I have done that to my books before, and that's not really a big problem either. What I do is I just take the book after the paint is dry and smash the book with another book, and it flattens out the paper. So there's always a way. <laughs> if you have another heavy big book, <laughs> just press it. But yeah, I'm trying not to use any water. I think it'll make it... And this paint, luckily, is nice and thin, so it doesn't really need watering down, unlike some heavy body acrylics, which definitely need to be watered down to get a nice smooth application. Um, this, this stuff is actually perfect for this. And I think I have seen Dee Dee using this in her channel too. Um, now I understand why she uses it. Um, it is pretty awesome stuff for for what we're trying to do. Um, and I only really realized that after we did that experiment where I tried all those different paints in my book. Um, I was like, wow, this really is the stuff. So I got a couple more colors and figured we could try it out for um, for the background for this as well. <clears throat> uh, let's see. <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> yup. <laughs> oh my. Good morning, Dorothy. Welcome. <laughs> all right. Working and lurking. I do that all the time. I love my lurkers, so thanks for coming. And yeah, if you guys are following along and you're going to do the same page, don't be shy about tagging me if you're on Facebook or... Um, on Insta, I love to see what you guys do um, if you're following along. Um, usually I'll feature them in my stories. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to make the background here black. I think I am. I'll leave it for now and come back to it though, in case I decide different.
and there's so many little tiny bits I'm at risk for missing some so that's another reason why going around it with a black is a really great way to start because then it's easy to fix a missed spot if you're just using one solid color to get going um, I think I will be mixing in other colors later, but uh, just to kind of see the overall um, the overall effect after we've applied the paint. Mm -hmm. So, what is everybody working on? And while I ask, while I wait for you guys to answer, I'm going to wash my brush. At this point now, it's starting to dry out at the top, and I don't want you don't want the paint to dry in the brush. So I'm going to wash it out completely. Then I'm going to um, dab it with a paper towel just to get it so it's just damp again. And then we're going to re repaint, re put more paint on. Um, let's see. Here. Depends on the outcome. <laughs> well, you know, you don't have to post everything you do, of course, but <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to tag me if you if you share on social. <laughs> All right, so I got some fresh paint on my brush. Uh, where was I here? I was right here. Uh huh. Hello, Starbuck. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Emily, this this month I am working on so many projects. You guys, if you've noticed, um, when I did my scheduled live streams this week, I'm starting three new pages in one week, which is going to be kind of weird. So I'm going to have several different um series going simultaneously and I actually need to start two other pages this month so I'm going to be quite busy with my channel um, we're going to be doing a lot of hanging out together <laughs> but I think it'll be fun um, and I'm not ashamed of starting whips you guys know I do that but um, oh wait oh that's part of that I just messed up a little bit here I'll just uh Paint that little spot and then just uh, we'll be fine. Let's um, touch up a little spots here where maybe there's a little bit too much water mixed in. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be finishing the pages as we go. Um, some will take less time than others. So we'll, we'll be fine. We'll get it all done. We have so many series going on now, so I, I'm probably going to say I'm not going to start any new pages until we finish at least some of the ones that we're starting this month. So I do have a lot of new requests. Um, I got some emails in and some direct messages. Um, so for those who, of you who have asked for new pages on top of the ones we're already doing, I did put them down in my list. I have like a little list in my YouTube. Uh, <laughs> I started a bullet journal this year just for YouTube, so um, I have that all written down already. So you are not forgotten, but unfortunately I think my YouTube schedule is getting kind of out of hand. <laughs> um, let's see. Hi Joey, welcome. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> let's see. Oh, Emily, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do any prep work. I think I'm going to do it from start to finish. I may not finish um, on Friday, but um, I do plan to finish both pages live on on stream so I'll just carry on after the event is over you're talking about the February event mm. 
so yeah those of you who don't know we are having an event coming up this weekend um, and you can find a whole lot more information on Facebook about it it's called February and um, there is a lot going on and I can link to the schedule in just a moment so that you guys know what live streams to attend okay so this lantern here might get a little lost when I put the black around it yeah I'm already seeing that but that's okay what we're gonna do we're going to make it glow later so I'm not fussing too much here. Um, good morning, Patty. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Emily, yeah, um, I believe so. I don't know if this is the official schedule, but as far as I know, here is the schedule for February. Let me just grab the link. Here it is. Oh, did Shannon beat me to it? Is that the same? Yeah, Shannon, you're good. Man, she's quick. So that's that's the schedule. I believe that's the official schedule. I could be wrong. Um, so we're just going around. And it's funny because this all this nitpicky work um, once we get it done, it's going to go a lot quicker. Okay. Awesome. Yep, I think it is the right schedule, but um, yeah. So that that's what's happening for this upcoming weekend. Um, we have so many artists making beautiful pages, and um, so those are all going to go on sale on the seventh. Alright, so my paint is getting a little bit tacky now. At this point, I'm going to spray it again. I'm just going to do one spritz and just wet the surface of the paint. That will keep it from drying out and becoming unworkable. I'm also just rinsing out my brush and then um, dabbing it with a paper towel so it's just damp to the touch but not dripping. So we're just sort of repeating what we did at the beginning. And my paint might dry quite quickly because it is warm. Um, I have a heating vent nearby, which is great if you've got chilly toes, but not so great for how quick paint dries. So, yeah, this week it seems like I'm also going to just be doing a whole lot of painting, which is kind of cool. Um, that's something that's been requested a whole lot on my channel, so um, kind of nice that we're 
doing that a lot. Oh, I made a mistake. That's totally fine though, guys. Totally okay. If you make mistakes, you can fix them with your pencils. So don't worry too much. Don't get upset with yourself. Nobody's perfect. That just seems a little watered down. See right here, I, I just went over the line, so that's, that's fine. There we go. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, you guys are having a race now, trying to out outlink each other. You guys are hilarious. I love my mods. All right. Zoom in closer, sure, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Zoomy, zoomy, you got it. Thanks, Kenny. All right, how's that? Now I'm going to have to move the book around, though, so we'll see how this goes. So you can see where I've gone over the lines right here. That's okay. No big deal. Is that a better view? Yeah, you got it. Uh huh. <laughs> so I don't know why, but I find this quite relaxing and meditative. Um, I think it's because I don't have to worry about what colors I'm choosing. Just fill in the background. Okay. So for all of this detail work, I am still using this one little brush. But we'll move on into the other bigger brushes in a bit. Just like to get the the basic. little spaces done first. Kind of put your mind at ease that you're not gonna badly go over the lines. <laughs> oh, <there you> go. <laughs> Abby's going to get some food. She was just sitting right here next to me on the on the chair. Mm -hmm. It is a rainy day today, very cold and wet outside, so I'm happy to be inside painting. Um, oh good. <laughs> Alright, I'm glad you guys like it. Let me move the paint now that I'm going to need to move the around a little. Okay, there we go. So let me just really quickly, I'm going to move this down a little bit so you guys can see more of where I'm headed. So hopefully I don't paint off camera, <laughs> which I have been known to do. Oh, 
gonna wash my brush off. Um, dang, the lines is boring. Oh my goodness, you guys, you're awesome. And yeah. coloring in the lines is only optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. There's a little bit here that I missed. Alright. <laughs> yeah, I just thought this page would be so much fun because um, I'm, I love to do metals, so there's a lot of metals in here, and I am not great at florals, so I thought this would be a nice challenge as far as the floral elements. Um, so I'm going to be challenging myself in some of it and then being comfy and having fun in the other bits. So that's good. <laughs> Let's see, let me, there's a big blob so I'm going to paint. If you have a big blob like that you can kind of just paint on the outside away from the details and then work your way in, drag the paint around. Or you can dab it off your brush, that'll work too. So basically when I'm doing this, the only thing that I'm trying not to do is to get a big plob of paint anywhere. Because um, that might make it hard to pencil over. So I'm trying to lay it down fairly smooth. It does seem to settle a little bit, but I do want it to be fairly flat. Let's see, we've got this little bit there. Um, <laughs> Hi, Otilia. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, Apple Barrel. Yeah, there's a lot of these um, craft acrylic matte uh, paints. They're all fairly similar. So I would say use what's available to you what you have on hand um, but I'll, I'll link in the <clears throat> excuse me I'll link in the description after the video is over this stuff is very cheap even on Amazon it's cheap but it's even cheaper in the store um, I can find this at my local Walmart or my local craft stores for usually under a dollar So, that's why I was like, hmm, if I'm going to be using this in my coloring books, I'm going to pick up some new colors. And then I gravitated towards all the galaxy colors. So I was like, well, I should just do a galaxy background then. Or a nebula, I guess. We're not going to do a galaxy per se. Happy girl. I don't know if you can hear her, but she's pulling out. Come here, cutie. Come over here. <laughs> well, she just wants attention, of course. She'll probably come over. She's not allowed on the desk today, though, so. Um. <laughs> Pickle. Well, there she is. She's full of energy. Hi, cutie. Little old lady can still run around like a spring chicken sometimes. She is so funny. Abby's 18, but sometimes she acts like she's a kitten. The way she zooms around the house. This is so cute. I don't know if you guys can see, hear her playing. She's got plenty of toys. Don't you? Wait! Go investigate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Abby is so cute when she's playing. I think she just wants me to watch her play, which is funny. Mm-hmm. 
can see if I went over the lines there too. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. <laughs> Um, let's see, was there a question asked? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Kyle, this is from Walmart. This is like, this is under a dollar normally. Um, the Americana Deco Art, as long as it's a matte acrylic paint, um, what I recommend doing is, is if, you, if you've never used a paint in your books before and you're not sure how it will take pencils, I recommend doing an experiment. So you know how Kirby has pages at the back of the book like for the for the search? You could just use one of those pages to test out your paint and see uh, how it performs, if it if it takes pencil well and um, how it covers and all that. So I would just do material tests on your pages. You know, on a different page, rather. Hi. How you doing, cutie? You playful? Here, you want me to grab you a toy? Where's your toy? Where's your favorite toy? Is it under the pillow? Here. Look, right here. Just giving her her favorite toy. Um. Oh, nice, Selena. Welcome. All right. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's tons of versions of this page out there by now. I'm a little late to the game uh, working in this book. But that's okay. I specifically didn't look at any other pages, so hopefully I'm doing something new, but... Alright, I need a little more paint here. <laughs> Jody. Hi, Nala. <laughs> oh, man, that's so cute. Yeah, Abby, it's funny, in other streams, um, Abby does the same thing, where she is like, hey, why is there a doggy or a kitty in my house all of a sudden? Yeah, I'm talking about you. Did you get your mousey? Me, there you go. <laughs> Sorry guys, she's wild this morning. I have no idea what's gotten into her. Normally she's a little bit chill at this point. Uh-oh. You're not going to come over here, are you? Hold on, I might need to kitty wrangle in a second. Because unlike the colored pencils, she's not allowed on the desk for this particular activity. But the way she is right now, I don't know if she's going to follow any rules. <laughs> um. Yeah, we'll be... Uh, we were just talking about that, Selena. Yeah, we're going to be getting it. Oh! Ah, 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 ah. Ha! Caught you. Yeah, you're not allowed up here, huh? You going to be a good girl? <laughs> you're not allowed in the paint. I see I'm painting. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm holding her now. Hopefully, she stays put. No. No. Not allowed up there, okay? <laughs> I love you too, but you're not allowed on the on the desk, okay? Yeah, you could 
girl? Sorry guys, I'm talking to her. I'm talking to the kitty cat because she's a little wild child this morning. You wild? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Leslie, I mean, she had her usual food. Abby does eat very well, though. Um, I think she had the rabbit this morning. Um, Abby eats organic, wet food only, because she has food allergies, so she can't eat dry food. Um, and she doesn't, she can't eat anything with chicken in it. She's allergic to chicken. So, <laughs> she eats, uh, rabbit, duck, lamb, salmon, venison, all the other fancy meats, um, turkey, although turkey gives her a slight reaction, but not too bad. <laughs> uh, let's see, Laura has picks, huh? Wait, what, Sue? I missed something here. Um. <laughs> Hi, Robin. I'm trying to figure out what Sue's saying here. You have pics? Oh, was there a baby? Congrats! Let's see, where was I? There's a little shape here. Hi, cutie. There's a little tiny shape right in here. Boop. Okay, now I need to move this down so I'm in camera. Make sure I'm straight. There we go. Um, oh, I have baby pictures. Okay. <laughs> I'll check it after the stream is over. Right now I have my hands full with my own little... My own little lady, although she's not a baby, she's a cat, but I'm holding her like a baby. So, <laughs> this isn't really a quick process. <laughs> um, we're actually probably going to run over our time, but that is just fine. I really want to get this background done today. So, if you guys are all right with that, you can, of course, take off if you need to. But I think I'm going to just hang on and stay until we're done the background. It does take some time to go around these little details. Um, awesome, Sue. Thank you. Hey, cutie.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the most important thing, that the baby is healthy. Uh-huh. happy girl. I don't know if you guys can hear her, but she's purring up a storm. Are you cutie, huh? Sue, I'm glad she's doing well. Uh, oh, hello, Raquel. You've got a family of raccoons. Oh. Well, hopefully they're all alright over there. Gotta watch the raccoons sometimes if you've got a small dog. thought it was an iguana. My goodness. Yeah, I've been uh, dealing with a squirrel actually right outside my bedroom window. He likes to climb up the gutter and then deposit nuts and acorns in the gutter. So that's interesting. And of course it sets off Abby whenever he sh stops by because of course he likes to make eye contact with her through the window. So they just have this little staring contest and Abby will chatter. Man, she does not like that dude. It's a fairly large squirrel too. All right, so abs are getting heavy. So will you sit in my lap? There we go. Can't hold her like that forever. Building my arm muscles this morning. There we go. Thank you, cutie. Guess she had a good runabout played and now she wanted to snuggle. That's what all your yarping was about. Let's go on the inside here. Let's put this big blob of paint in the middle there and spread it around.
<laughs> so feel free if you need to rotate the book. That's totally fine. I'm just not doing that because it's easier to keep it in camera if I <laughs> if I keep it still. For the purposes of this video. <laughs> But if you're at home doing this along with me, then feel free to rotate and get comfortable. Make it easy on yourself. Let's see, I have not looked up for just Quite a while here. Kind of work in the paint. Hold on. I will check the chat though. Just smoothing out the paint where it's a little rigid, like where it's got ridges. Not ri it's not rigid, it has ridges. You're almost sleeping. I'm sorry to put you to sleep, Otilia. <laughs> I don't mean to. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very long <laughs> process. But yes, if you're having trouble sleeping, this video might be ideal for for putting people to sleep. Cause it is a whole lot of the same thing. But I like doing these real time with you, just so you guys can see. I take my time. I don't, I don't rush or fuss too much about um, getting it done quickly. I really try to enjoy the process and take as long as I need to to get it done. I mean, I'm not, you know, there's no, there's no race. It's not a However long things take you, that's how long is right for you. So if you're quick, that's fine. And if you're like me, a snail, then that's fine too. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Oh, no, you don't, Abby. Abby is not allowed to help with this one. Here, go over there. Oh, okay. Sorry, cutie, not today. Maybe another time. <laughs> Sorry, guys cat wrangling. Okay. Um, hi Bo, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would want to sleep, Otilia, you sleep. I'm not going to be offended. I know a lot of people fall asleep to my videos, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm, some people might be offended thinking that they're, you know, but I don't really care. Whatever makes you happy. If you like watching and falling asleep, then I'm happy. <laughs> yep, it's a whole lot of the same task. But, you know, I mean, sometimes that's how coloring is. That's sometimes how art is. You gotta just go through the whole... Oh, I went over the lines. You just have to go through the whole process, whatever needs doing. <laughs> All right. Oh wait, I, sh I have more of this interior to do. I should do that. So a trick is, is I try to keep the hand space where I'm going to be putting my hand free of paint. That way I can rest my hand down on the paper. 
So that's why you saw me go in the direction that I did. And luckily this stuff dries really quickly, but um, yeah, I try to kind of keep my hand free from the paint so that way I don't drag my hand through it. Um, just a little tip. Uh, oh yeah, that was a great bow. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, I've heard that a lot, that people, um, I, I actually have people write me emails that they use my videos to fall asleep. And I am not offended. That's totally okay with me. However you want to watch my videos, that's fine. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. Um... I have heard that before, and it's funny because I, that's not like my intention or anything, but uh, whenever I'm painting like this, it relaxes me and calms me so much that I think that's what you hear in my voice is that I'm calm. Um, there's, there's a, I don't know, there's something about it. And that's how painting has always been for me, whether it be painting on my own, or in coloring books, or even just uh, using pencils. Um, it always puts me in this state of just total relaxation. I think that's why I love it so much. Because um, in my day-to-day -day life, I'm a lot more high energy, kind of... Um, I don't know how to explain it, but painting always calms me down, helps me focus. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course we watched Bo. Yep, and if you guys haven't checked it out already, Bo just did another video. And in fact, I know we have several streamers who are here in the chat. So, go and check each other out. There are some amazing, amazing streamers here in the chat. And if you have a channel and you'd like to be um, promoted, just go ahead and mention it in the chat and everybody can go and check you out no problem with that. Um. Oh yeah, Excel would uh, definitely put anybody to sleep. <laughs> or at least me. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm glad you like listening. Um, well that's good, Sue. I'm glad that it's a good sleep. Yeah. Yep. And I've fallen asleep to other streams, so I totally get it. Um, I don't think anybody takes offense. I just need to then go back and watch what I missed the next day, but that's fine. And if anybody is looking for good videos to fall asleep to, I also watch the Bob Ross channel. And um, there's another channel too which I like to watch while I am, if I, like if I'm having trouble sleeping, which doesn't actually happen very often, but or if I'm just relaxing in bed, um, and that is Peter Draws. So those are two channels of artists who have very soothing voices. So if you're watching my videos for that, you might also enjoy them. Um, and another one actually, Isabel has a really soothing voice. Um, Passionista Colorista. 
So if you're looking for other coloring channels. Um, there's a lot of great channels, though, with people with um, soft voices. <laughs> but yeah, I don't do it intentionally. It just sort of happens. Yep. We are almost done the black. I'm already loving how the uh, the foreground is popping off of the background this way. It's going to be pretty cool, I think. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep, and if anybody has any questions, just go ahead and put them in all caps. I know I'm probably missing quite a lot of the chat because I have my head down painting, but I do look up from time to time. I do like how matte this is. It reminds me a lot of gouache, but it's actually thinner than gouache. And also permanent, whereas gouache is rewettable. But the same matte feeling. This paint is really great. Especially for the price. I cannot believe the price a great deal <laughs> for the quality and the type of properties it has where it's so matte and it's has like a surface that just makes color pencil just take to it so beautifully and yeah in that last experiment I did I was like whoa I need to start using this more and I always had some like laying around but I bought a bunch of new colors after I <laughs> discovered that in the last video. It's like, whoa. Oh. Well then. Let's use it. Okay, so we've got this here. I think I need a little more water. Um, hi Jamie, welcome. Yeah, we're going to be adding some colors into it, but we're starting with black. <laughs> let's see, let's do this spot here. Sorry, I pulled away quickly. Oh, there it is. Bit of water. No, no. So that happens occasionally. I'm just going to blot it. Should be fine. The water just ran down the brush. Let's see, where were we over here? I tried to get it away in time, but it did not happen. Uh, here's another spot. Uh. <laughs> oh, can you hear the rain, Leslie? Yeah, it's raining here. So that could also be why we're putting Otilia to sleep. Of course, she's trying to work, so that might not be ideal. Yeah, it is raining here. Quite nice though. It's not like a 
driving rain. Oops, I went over the lines again. Oh well. So I am using the Deco Art Americana acrylic um, paint. This is Lamp Ebony Black. It's uh, any cheap matte acrylic paint will do. Um, the craft paints that you get at like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, or if you're not in the States, you can get it on Amazon as well. Oops. Um, yeah, it seems to work really well for this use we've got a little tiny bit right here and that is still a little wet so I'm gonna leave it go for right now and let it dry a little more Oh, Leslie, I don't know. <laughs> to, to, I don't know what that word is, Leslie, but um, yeah, that must be slang. Whatever it is, I doubt we think you're like that. All right, let's see if this is dry enough now. Yep, it's fine. So if you just, if you drop water, just let it dry out a little. You can blot it like I did, just to kind of get up any excess so it doesn't buckle. I'm almost out of my paint, but I'm also almost finished, so hopefully... Uh, oh, goodness, went over again. <clears throat> it's all okay. So this is probably the most tedious part of the background. We're going to be finishing it up fairly soon. Then we can get on into the fun bit of adding color. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'm still going to primarily use mostly black in the background, but I will be adding in some color here and there to make it feel like it's like a nebula. And then we're going to do some stars. It's going to be, I think, a nice um, atmosphere without being super fussy. And I don't know why, but steampunk reminds me of time travel and space travel. So why not? I've been doing a lot of blues and greens already on my pages, so I think we're going to use a little bit more blue and purple in this background, but we'll see what happens. You never know with me. But that's the plan. Oh, am I off camera? Of course. Sorry about that. Um, oh, you're in Kentucky. Okay. 
I am in Philadelphia, PA. Currently it is cold and rainy outside. So I am very glad I took a walk last night because I don't think I'm going to be walking in this rain today. <laughs> it was beautiful last night. It was actually warmer than it is right now. And, uh, it was just, it was dry. It was foggy and dry, but I think the clouds were rolling in for our weather today. Okay. Are you guys ready to wake up? Because we are almost done. And now the exciting bit will begin. So if you're falling asleep, just fair warning, I might get excitable in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, Shannon. Thank you. <laughs> wow, 71. No, oh, we weren't that warm. I I consider 50 degrees in winter time warm here. But yeah, it was still Still nice walking weather, though. Okay. Oh, nope, I missed a spot. Oh, no, wait, that's the flower. Yep, nope, I think we're good. So now at this moment, I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to just inspect and see if I can find any spots that I missed. Um... This is a nice thing to do before you get into the color because anywhere where there's that black paint, that's going to sort of indicate to me the background so I know where I need to go with my paint. I'm rinsing off my brush, keeping it clean. So what I'm doing is I'm just following around. I do think I want to put, I think I do want to put black back there now that I'm looking at it. So let me put a little more black on my palette because I've run out. I'm just going to put a little dab on there. And is there anywhere else before I get going on that? Yep, I see a spot here. a spot right here where it's not quite dark enough. Let's just fix that. And I missed a little spot right here. So I'm just going around and like correcting any issues or mistakes I made. Okay, I'm going to work on this spot here. So let's zoom back on in and we can finish this up. So there's a good chance that I'll probably leave the majority of the background black around the, the, the main elements here, but I probably will bring a little bit of color in in some spots. So you'll see I might go over some of this black with another color. That's totally fine. 
but by making it black back there, I'm really giving a whole lot of contrast. The, the main um, elements of this drawing will pop against that black. And that's what I'm looking for. I really want, even though the, the, the space background will be cool, I want the main drawing to be the focus and not the background. So that's why I'm doing this this way. Of course, if you want to do it any way you like, that is totally fine. Just explaining my reasoning there. So yeah, I'm thinking, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm thinking about using mixed metals so I can show several different, I've, I've done another metal um, tutorial in the past. I'm thinking about doing um, both brass and silver for this guy, so that way we get some more mixed metals. I think I like that much better. Sometimes if I'm not sure an area, I will leave it till the end. See how everything looks and then um, make my decision. Okay, so that should dry pretty nicely. Let's see here. Um, hello, Joanna. Welcome. Uh-huh. If you're already looking for that, Patricia, I do have a video already in my channel on how to do brass and silver. Um, but we're going to do it again. Oh, no. Texas is getting a snowstorm. That's funny. All right. So let's zoom out here. At this point here, what we're going to be doing is going to sort of be all over the place. So I think we're going to stay zoomed out and um, work all over. Okay, so I'm really digging my idea for the purple and blue background. So, um, let's see which ones of these. I've got to actually open some of them because they're brand new. Let's grab some. Scissors. Where's the kitty cat? Oh, there you are. You are such a good girl. Abby is sleeping right behind me on the floor. She's such a good cat. She knows she's not allowed near the paint. She tried and she failed, so now she's just hanging out and napping. There we go. And so whenever I um, am using these, I do give them a good shake. So that's what I'm doing here. What other colors? And so, um, let's see, the center of the wheel. The center of the wheel. I'm looking. Oh, I missed a spot here. I don't know what you mean by the center of the wheel. Can you explain, Sue? I did miss a spot right here, though. So thank you for saying that, because it made me look harder. Boop. Um. Oh, Joanna, that's funny. The center of the wheel. Um, Joanna, we are using all paint today, but then later on we're going to be doing the, um, in probably next week's stream, we will start with polychromos. So I'm grabbing the dioxazine purple. Actually, I'll wait to palette until I've opened them all. Um, 
I'm also going to use ultramarine blue, which is what I'm opening right now. New paint, guys. This is exciting. Um, the part I just painted. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha. Yep. Sorry, I'm a little slow there. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if I wanted to paint that, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I did now. So we're good. Alright. We've got ultramarine blue. And then I think I'm also going to use this ultra blue deep. Um, question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Arita, hello Arita. How do you decide how far out from the edge of the image to take the background color? Um, that's a great question. Basically, um, you can see I'm not consistent. Some of it's a little tighter and some of it's not. Um, I don't really have a set rule with that. Um, sometimes it's just however far I felt like the paint needed to spread in order to lay flat. In other areas, it was just like in here, it's really tight, so I just kind of wanted to get out away from that, um, all the details. Um, but like around here, it's almost one continuous edge, so I didn't feel the need to really like go out too far from it. But there's no real rule. It's mostly if I had a lot of paint and I wanted to push it out. I just did that. Um, you can paint the entire background black if that makes you happy. Um, I'm just going to conserve my paint and sort of um, mix the black in as I go. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's any real rule there with that. Um, kind of whatever, whatever I'm feeling <laughs> at the moment. Um, Bo, I'm going to actually use some other colors and we're going to make um, a spacey background but with colors in there. So I will be using more black for the background, but um, you, you guys will see. There's no right way to do this. Um, you can fill it with black first if that makes you happy. Um, I'm just going to show, I like to use as little paint as possible and conserve. I know this stuff is cheap, but I still like to <laughs> conserve what I have. Um, so you'll see um, my method here. I'm also going to switch to a larger brush at this point. Um, so I'm going to be using my 6 Filbert. This is a, a more stiff acrylic brush. It's meant for this type of thing. Um, okay, so the colors that I've pulled, I think I'm going to use all of these. So um, I'm going to put them on my palette. I'm using Dioxazine Purple. Oh wait, I need to switch it so it will focus. So I'm using Dioxazine Purple. Come on, focus, please. There we go. I'm using Purple Pizzazz. Come on, there we go. I'm using um, Ultramarine Deep. There we go. Ultra Blue Deep. And then of course the black that we were using before. There we go. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to palette some of this stuff up. Oh good. So I'm putting a little bit of black, and then I'm putting a little bit of all the other colors, and we're going to kind of just pull from them as we like. And of course, we'll add as we go as well. So if there's not enough on my palette, I can always add more. <clears throat> um, take care, Pickle. Let's see. Hi, Heather. Welcome. Um, <laughs> okay, so I've got all of my colors on the palette now, and my brush is dry. 
Um, for this, it's not actually a bad thing that it's dry, but I'm going to get it a little bit wet. Um, and then use a paper towel to get the excess water off. Sorry, let me grab a drink of water again. <clears throat> All right, your brushes need water and you need water. Okay, so I'm, I'm making my brush fairly dry. Um, the reason why is we're going to be using a dry brush technique now to blend and get the um, colors going. And you'll notice that I did not spray my palette with water this time. Um, so I'm dipping into the Ultra Blue Deep and I'm mixing that with the black to make a really, really dark blue. And I'm just going to start, there's no right or wrong here. I'm just going to start by dabbing this paint on. And now I'm dipping with a dirty brush, dipping into the blue, the ultra blue deep. And now I'm dipping into the ultramarine blue. So you notice I'm not washing my brush. I'm letting the, the paint kind of mix on my brush as I go. So that was black. Now I'm dipping into the ultramarine. But see, it's so dark because I've still got a lot of black. Instead of washing my brush to get the excess paint off, I'm just going to wipe it off but it's still got paint loaded in there so what we're doing is um, basically like in brush mixing so instead of mixing it on my palette I'm mixing it on my brush I'm now I'm dabbing into the ultra blue deep Now you can see how some of this paint is semi-transparent. When I go over it with the black, you can see there's a difference there in the color. This is part of the reason why I didn't cover my page with black completely, because I do want some of those colors to stand out and be bright. All right, now I'm dipping into the ultramarine again. And now I'm going to dip into the dioxazine purple. Let's put some purple in here. Okay. And now dipping into the black. And now back into the purple. But there's plenty of black already on my brush, so it's mixing in there. Now back into the purple. Just going to go back over this. Now there's a lot of paint right here, so this is where I'm going to use my scumbling brush. This is a number six round uh, blender. And I'm just going to kind of Work that paint and move it around. This is a dry brush now. Okay, I'm going to drop that into my water, get it wet. Now use it again. Um, hi Lisa, welcome. Sorry if I'm not paying attention to the chat. This is something that kind of moves quickly. So all the uh, all those of you who were sleeping before, wakey wakey. <laughs> all right. So now we're using purples up here. I'm gonna dip into that purple pizzazz, that bright purple. Let's see how this looks. Now I've got a lot of black on my brush. 
See, this is the type of thing, this is why I wanted to um, mix on my brush, because you can see it, it, nothing is coming out a pure color, which is great actually, because I want this to be mostly black with just some touches and hints of color. So this isn't really a galaxy background, it's a starry background. But by putting in a little bit of color, it just gives a little interest back there. Now there's no right or wrong way. If you want your galaxy to be brighter, you can do it a different way where you don't put as much black in. Going back over here with some of that purple. Now I'm dipping into the dioxazine purple. Now we have taped this off, I'm still being a little bit careful. We are working directly in the book. So if possible, I would like to preserve the rest of the pages. We'll see if that happens or not, but we'll see. So I'm not using any water at all right now. It's quite bright there. I'm going to dip this back in the water just so it doesn't dry out. Now I'm dipping into the purple pizzazz. I'm giving a little bit of a bright purple in here. You can see I'm just dabbing my brush strokes on, not really worrying about what it looks like right now because we can add more layers on top of this, um, especially as it dries. Okay, now I'm going to dip into the Ultra Blue Deep, kind of mix those two together. Alright, now I'm dipping into the Purple Pizzazz, we're going to create a bright spot right in here and let's kind of go in a little. So what I'll be doing is, when, on my second layer, I'm going to use a smaller brush and get into some of these little small spots if I want to. Um, dipping into the dioxazine purple. So I have not cleaned my brush at all, so I only used water at the very beginning to kind of get it going. Now I'm going to dip into the Ultra Blue Deep. We've got blue over here, so I'm going to try and kind of continue that all the way around. Okay, I'm going to dip into the black a little. This transition looks a little too abrupt for me. There we go. Now let's dip into the ultramarine blue, using quite a bit of paint here just to get it down. Now I'm going to spread it out. So I'm still trying not to get too many brush strokes here, I'm trying to keep the paint fairly flat. We've got some edging going on here, so let's put a little more black. Kind of break up and make that less outliney. Okay, so what I'm doing here is scumbly. Basically, I'm taking a dry brush and dabbing and blending the colors together. Question, are you thinking ahead to your future color palette as you choose the gradient colors there on the edge? Or are blues, your pur blues and purples your pur Um, Rita, that's a great question. Uh, I did visualize, I'm dipping into my purple pizzazz as I chat. I did visualize this page as being primarily um, a purple and blue background with um, a mixed metal uh, gearing 
clockworky thing, and um, I'll most likely use fairly traditional colors for the leaves, like greens, and um, probably blues and purples for the flowers. So I'm using a limited palette, but um, I'm not just saying that that's the only way to go. Of course, you can use a really colorful palette um, as well. Okay, so now this is a too big of a brush now. I've covered the whole area, so I'm going to clean this off and then switch over to a smaller brush again. Um, welcome back, Kenny. I didn't realize you were gone. I'm sorry. Oh, are you buffering? It says I'm okay. Uh, it says I'm still going. You're good. Okay, you're good. Okay. Um, huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why you're buffering, Kenny. Let's see. Did I miss any other questions? If you do have questions for me, don't be afraid to put them in all caps. I'm just switching my water cup. I have a spare one over here, so I'm just going to use him now. Okay. Make sure when you're cleaning your brushes to get them completely clean. Acrylic paint does dry permanent when it's dry, so unfortunately you can ruin your brush that way. Done that plenty of time. Um, it does stain your brushes sometimes, that's fine, but as long as there's no actual paint in there, you can see it's com completely cleaned out. That's what you're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to jump back. I'm going to actually use my more raggedy old round. This is an eight round, but you can see the difference here. I'll get it wet just so that you can see. This one's been well loved. This is a newer brush. And this is a well-loved brush, so it's got a more um, uneven edge here where this is coming to a point, really. This still comes to a point, but it's more um, raggedy and, and more irregular, if that makes sense. So as it dries out and gets um, kind of manipulated, you can see how it kind of frays and... and I love brushes when they get to this point because it actually makes it really fun to do stuff like this is uh, what we're going to do next, which is just adding another layer of um, color. So I'm also going to, let's see here, the colors that I want, I'm going to use the ultramarine here and I'm just going to go over and now I'm going to start working this color into the black a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about getting it super bright because again the background isn't the main focal point of this page however adding a little bit of color back there so I'm going to add a little bit of color in here um, it just it gives it a little more interest when we put the stars on top you'll see it kind of just gives it little bit something extra than just having it completely black but again if you feel like doing a completely black background that's totally cool too um, the stars will still look beautiful on there or if you want to do a much brighter background you can use less black paint and more of the color so you can also um, choose a different palette altogether really the sky's the limit so you can just take what I'm doing here and make it your own for sure. Um, there's no wrong, wrong way to color. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of the dioxazine purple. I want to add a little more purple up here. So this is why I've grabbed the smaller brush now. I am working the color into some of the areas that we originally made black at the beginning. But I'm not fussing or worrying too much. We can also go over this with pencil later. 
so it does not have to be perfect. Uh, let's put some more purple over here closer to this gear and kind of in here and work that on out. So what I'm doing here, this is called a scumbling. It's basically where the brush is dry and you're just working the paint into the paper by scribbling. And it gives like a soft effect when you go over it enough. You can use any kind of brush to scumble. Some are easier to work with than others, but that's why I like using these old brushes to do it. It gives like a really soft look. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joanna. Yep, older brushes do know your hand. Okay, I'm dipping into the purple pizzazz now. And we're going to go in. It's so scumbling again. Just working that paint around until it's a soft edge. I'm going to bring it on in closer to these leaves here. Grab a little bit more paint, not a lot, just a little. Let's start out and work our way in again. Kind of dipping into that paint I put down. So this is a way to kind of make it look like it's the color is coming in, but I'm just doing it in some places where it's the brightest and allowing that black to be behind the majority of the clockworks and the florals. Heather, I'm sorry you didn't sleep well. Is your, is your pain really bad today? I hate that when I don't sleep well. Okay, let's add a little bit more of this purple. So basically I'm just continuing the background and trying to ignore, so what I'm doing is like Seeing where this purple flows, I'm trying to just pretend like these things don't, I mean obviously I'm working around them, but pretend like they don't exist. So that way it'll continue on through and look like it's one continuous form back there. Again, not really using any water, trying to keep the water out of the paint. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Well, I hope you get some sleep soon, Heather. All right, now I'm dipping into the ultramarine blue. I'm just going to extend that blue. Again, still haven't washed my brush. No need. We're, we're using a dirty brush today. Just adding a little bit more blue. It's so black, but adding a little bit of this color really does give it a little something extra. So just dabbing in color, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's really, really part of the fun of it. Like I think this purple is a little bit too big, so I've gone in with my black. I'm going to just go right on over what I just did, kind of break it up a little bit. So let's see. 
I've still got some blue on my brush that's coming out here. That's totally fine. Just didn't want it to be that big of a mass of purple. So the, by using a dry brush, it gives like this soft cloudy look, which is really, really nice. Cool. I like that better. Okay, now I'm going to grab the dioxazine purple. I'm going to work a little purple down here. Why not? This is really at your discretion. You don't have to follow along. You can use your, your own ideas. I'm going to grab some of this purple pizzazz. I like this color. I kind of want to let it look like it's flowing through the form and onto this other side. So you see, I just kind of follow with my brush above and then let's add a little of that right on the other side. Just to kind of make it feel like the background is flowing. And let's grab some more ultramarine blue. And I think I want to work that right up here. Kind of mix the purples up a little with some blue. And uh, I'm going to use some of the ultramarine blue deep down here. Just kind of give it a little more saturation there. See, I think I'm missing some chat. I'll check it out. Um, hi, Cassie. Welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys are talking about, but if you do have a question for me, don't forget to put it in all caps. Um, let's see. I'm starting to really like how this is working out. here. I know it's really dark. Let me see if I can... Yeah. It looks brighter to me than it does on camera. Uh, let's see here if I can adjust it a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. That's funny how this is looking more washed out. In to my eye in person, it's um looking a little bit maybe maybe it's this that needs to be adjusted. Yeah, that's a little better. Alright, I'm washing my brush only because I don't want it to dry out. And actually, I'm fairly happy with how this is looking. It is atmospheric without being over the top. And that was the look I was going for. So now I'm going to start adding stars. So there's a couple of different techniques that you can use for this. Um, there is the spatter technique, which I think I'm going to try out. And there's also um, painting them by hand. So I think we're going to use a mixture of the two. Um, take care, Heather. No worries. I hope you feel better. I hope you get some sleep. Um, okay, so in order to use the spatter technique, I want to avoid spattering white paint on the inner foreground. So for that, I'm going to grab another piece of paper, one moment. What should I use for this app? I'm going to kind of scrap this a little. So I just have a scrap piece of paper here. Um, I was using it, I guess, for something else. So I'm going to just take this here 
and I'm just going to tear it. So first I'm going to tear, I'm just going to, oh, oh, it's got tape on it. Hold on. I'm just going to tear it. That'll be nice. And first, I'm just trying to get a general shape. this area so let's see here okay so there's a couple of bits that might stick out but that's okay just taking the tape off um this is just drawing paper, Joanna. You can use any kind of paper as long as it'll resist the the paint well enough. This is like heavy duty drawing paper, but I use this for another project. I like to reuse stuff as much as possible. I don't really throw away stuff if it's still useful. I know that might be called hoarding to some, but for me it's just trying to be conservative with my materials. Okay, I'm going to save some of these bits in case. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just strategically tearing the paper. The reason why I'm tearing it and I'm not cutting it is I don't want it to be perfect. No, Abby. Oh, Abby loves torn paper. Sorry. Come here, you. Okay, all right. Come here. Get your tail out of there. Yeah, you like, to, you like tearing paper, right? Um, so now I'm just tearing the corners, trying to make a more rounded shape. If there's stuff that sticks out, we can cover it with a bit of excess paper that we tore off. So this doesn't have to be perfect. Yep, I just tore a little too much there. This needs, this is actually fairly good. So I'm just going to take this, calm down. I'm going to grab my painter's tape here. I know, Adam. Just stick this on. So this is a quick and dirty mask. This is something that really easy to do. Um, I'm not actually going to tape it down. Um, just going to leave it just like this. We've got a little spot sticking out right here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I do use everything, Joanna, so, yeah, I don't feel like it's weird. Okay, so you've got some bits sticking out down here. So don't worry if you, um, so just keep the little scraps that you tear off. You can always tape them back on in strategic places if you need to. Right up. You know, you can't hang out with me in just a minute here. We're going to be doing some spattering. But for right now, you're all right. Okay. I think that's actually good. Can you see? All right, so I'm not going to tape this down. So really, the trick is not to move it once it's in place. Okay, Abby, will you sit behind me, cutie? I think I do need a little bit. Actually, right. Good girl. Man, she's such a good cat. So 
sorry about the baby downstairs. I can't control that. That's the next door or the downstairs neighbors. That is just part of the part of being live. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think that will do it. I'm just checking and making sure it looks good. All right, guys. So this is fun. Um, <laughs> Hi, Laura. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you could tell I had an idea of what I was going to do today. So now I rarely ever do this technique. So this is going to be interesting. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, I have a toothbrush here. So this is what we're gonna use to spatter with. And we're going to use the Deco Art Snow Titanium White. Oh, hello. Sometimes it has like this gunk on it, so I'm gonna just take that off there. Peel that right off, it comes right off, which is nice. Let's just make sure. There's no debris. Line our mask back up. That looks good. Okay, so I'm going to pour some of this on the palette and um, dip my toothbrush in. So what I'm doing here, I'm just dipping the front of the toothbrush in. Oh, cat hair. Sorry. So I have just the front of the toothbrush dipped in. Let's see, I'm going to do a test spray, just really quick on the palette. Yeah, that looks okay, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is, you, you take the brush and you're going to pull back and that'll spray it forward. So here I'll show you. We're going to spray like this, it gives a really nice fine spray. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me uh, see. If... Let's see here. Yeah, I don't know if you can really see it too well, but let's see here. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Um, but what it is, it, it's doing, it's creating like a nice fine little spray of stars really really small dots I don't know if you guys can see but I can see it <laughs> it's uh it's tough to zo zoom in because we're going to be working all over the place but This works so well, actually. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate the page, and the reason being is I want to make sure not to get this page covered with stars, and this sprays forward, so by being at this angle, we should be fine. I'll zoom in when we're done so you guys can get a better view of this what it comes out looking like. Sorry, cat hair, hold on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these for the fine tiny stars. This would take forever to do by hand, but then we'll add some other bigger stars in by hand once we're done. Let's just see if I can get everything in camera. There we go. Sorry, excuse me, I bumped the camera. Okay, so now I'm going to take the mask away and see if there's any... Okay, that worked out really well. But now I'm going to try and control with 
moving this around and being a little bit more precise. Just getting a little closer. And you can also, like for this area, I'll just put some dots in by hand. Okay, I need more. Miss this whole area up here. That's better. There's also like these areas in here. I'm not worried about that really. So I'll zoom in for you guys. Um, just let me uh, take a moment to clean off my finger <laughs> and the toothbrush. I'll be right back. show you guys a close-up. I'll move this a little out of the way. Let's zoom in a little. Oh, okay. That's too far over here. So, can you guys see this okay? How it's like a fine... Let's see if I can focus it. Yeah, that's as focus as it gets. It's like a really, really fine spray. <clears throat> I can actually see it better in person. Then the camera is seeing it. Okay, so what we'll do now is we're going to add some additional white dots. Um, hi Bella, welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> Cat hair has just added texture. Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> hi Andrea, welcome. <clears throat> okay. Let me take another sip of water. And we're going to wrap this up with some additional stars. So now I'm using my nice and pointy new number eight round. This comes to a nice point. <clears throat> um, and we're just going to add individual stars. So I'm using the same paint that I used before, and we're just going to start dotting in. Now, these are going to be larger, which is fine, so I'm just going to take my time and add them randomly throughout. There's like a splotch here, so I'm going to try and make that into like a little comment or something, try and make it look intentional. <laughs> Here, should I zoom in a little more? Let me do that. Um, there we go. All right. Good night, Patty. I hope you get some sleep. Oh. I hope you feel better soon, too. Hi, Connie. Welcome. Um, who else is here that just popped in? Hello, hello, welcome. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Um, 
so what we're doing here, we're just, just keep dotting. This is going to, again, just be something that takes a while to do. So the trick is to try and make it as random as possible. Um, so these are like the larger stars in the sky. You can also fix, like, um, I've gone over the lines here, so I'm just going to fix the mistakes I've made with this white paint. It's uh, it's it looks a lot harder than it actually is. It just um, takes a little bit of time. And we can also add more stars later if we want to. Oh, I'm out of camera, of course. Let's see. Oh, I'm glad that you like it, guys. Alright, actually, I think I can get rid of this now. Oh, yep, we did go over the... Yep, okay, that's... Oh, that's nice getting rid of that. Oh, my goodness. And use the book again. Actually, let me do that. Let's, uh... I'm going to take off the tape. I'll zoom out. Now that we're done doing the major big background work, I'm just going to kind of take the tape off. So I'm just taking this off real slow. Whoa, it is tearing the paper a little bit. That was what I was afraid of. Even the low tack tape okay what I'll do then is I will paint this background there we go the rest of that's fine it's not too bad though so that's okay I'll just be painting this side then <laughs> and uh, it'll be it'll be just fine okay there we go I don't like to leave the tape on too long because it does tend to tear the paper um, this paper isn't really meant for this technique, so I'm not super surprised, but I was hoping that I would get away with it. Um, oh wait, I need to zoom back in. Hold on. Zoomy, zoomy. Okay. There we go. Um, thank you, Connie. Well, thank you so much. And uh, welcome, Lisa. Did I say you? Oh yes, you, you've been here, sorry. Um, let's see, who else? Hey, thanks guys. I'm so glad you guys like it. You know, I wasn't sure how I would feel about doing this. Oh, yep, yeah, I went over the lines right here. So see, this white paint is great for cleaning up any mistakes you make with the background painting. So we went over the lines quite a few places over here, so let's just tidy up our little problem spots. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how I'd feel about doing space, but then I thought about it and I was like, you know, it doesn't have to be realistic. Like, um, we can do what we want to so let's just fix that so whatever you feel like doing is the right thing there we go I made quite a few mistakes in this spot and you know what I'm gonna actually do something here which maybe some people won't agree with but I'm gonna change the line work a little bit 
I don't really like how this line is going over. I don't know why it's bothering me, but it is, so I'm going to paint right on over it. Yeah, I want that wheel to be behind it. So, sorry of you that, <laughs> that don't believe in changing the line work, but I think, for me personally, I just like that a little better. Okay, big dot there. Um... I'm going to keep going. I'm going to put some little dots right in here. Like so. Maybe another. Bella, here, let me zoom out and I'll show you. Uh, that's a great question. So it hasn't bled through per se. There's a spot though on the top where I was messy and probably shifted the paper that was protecting it. So when that shift happened, it only happened at the top. You see the bottom is fine. So that, that's just me being, um, you know, not perfect. Um, but luckily, I, th I think there's ways to fix that, um, either by, um, you know, painting it white or um, just painting that background as well. So um, I'm not too worried about it. I think it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, it doesn't bleed through. It's, it's quite nice, actually. Um, let's zoom back on in, and we will continue... Moving around this here. Um, that's a great question, though. Let's see. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. <laughs> yeah, I'm in charge. Yep, I know, but I, you know, I, I don't mind if people give me hell for it. It's fine. Um, just my own personal preference. <laughs> yeah, I think I shifted when I had this this page, you know, you can tape it down if you want to. When I had this page, you can see I think I shifted it a little bit because there's some some blo blobbiness right here where over here it's not. So I think it's just uh just me not being perfect keeping the paper still. Um and that was probably when I was rotating the book around. Um, you can tape that paper down, and that probably won't happen. I should have done that, but that's okay. You know, it's 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 cool. Um. <laughs> These things happen. And you guys know by now that I, I just take mistakes in stride. No need to beat yourself up about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, luckily it doesn't bleed through, so that's great. So you can put these little dots wherever you, your heart desires. Just sort of trying to be a little random, but at the same time maybe create like some constellation kind of looking patterns like here's a nice little cloudy shape here so let's see here I'll put a dot there big ones small ones Let's see here. So I know that a lot of people struggle with backgrounds, but really it's not too hard to get a fairly decent background. 
pretty quickly. Um, I think the whole thing is, is just having the idea of what you want it to look like. Um, that's the trick there. Um, hi Monia, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Did you get your webcam? Are we going to set you up today? <laughs> That's exciting. Awesome. So after the stream is over, I'm just going to take a quick break and then we can um, set you up for live streaming. So everybody go and follow Monia because she's going to be live streaming. And uh, it will be quite fun. Boop. Put a big dot right there. No, wait, that's not big enough. There. He's going to be a big one. Like a planet. Alright, I like that. I don't know, I just, I like to break up the sizes sometimes. Boop, boop, little ones. Okay, let's move on over to, wait, can you guys see? Um, there we go. Okay, so there's a couple of mistakes I've made over here. So let me just fix that really quick. I'm going to fix this little spot right here. And this here. And what was the, oh, here, this little spot right there like so. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see here. Oh, don't be nervous, Monia. The whole community is behind you. Um, I understand that being nervous, I feel the same way. Um, but... Once you get into it, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. So now in these little dark spots here where we don't have any of the spatter, just going to focus on putting a bunch of stars in here. There we go, and now I'm going to carry that through on the outside. Um, <laughs> you were going to go live after me. All right, awesome, Bo. 
Well, feel free. I mean, I, I'm going way over my time. I am aware of that. So feel free to jump on now if you want to. Um, I'm just doing dots, so I'm sure that other people can just uh, figure out what's going to happen next. Um. <laughs> Not really anything fancy happening now at this point. It's just going to be dots. So yeah, and fixing mistakes, of course. Um, yeah. I just want to get all the painting done in this session, so that way next session we can jump right on into um, using our pencils. I'm going to rotate the book just that way. It's a little bit easier for me. Um, oh, wait. Let's see. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, oh, thank you, Monia. Yeah, don't worry about, um, don't worry about being nervous. I know, I know how it's, how it feels, but, um, I'll be there for you, and a bunch of other people will be super supportive, so don't you worry. Um, yeah, I know it's scary, guys, but the thing about going live is that it gets easier the more you do it. So, um, you know, when I first started, I would, I would be scared, too. Um, even now, I get scared still. Um, but, you know, once, once the stream is actually going and you're doing something that you love, you kind of forget to be nervous. It's like all that scariness falls away once you get color in. So, and uh, as far as, like, the actual chatting goes, I know it's sometimes hard to keep up with chat, but you get used to that as well. Um, and... Now, I love coloring with you guys. Like, it used to be so scary to me, but I can tell you that the more you do it, the less scary it gets, and the more fun it is. And um, now, whenever I miss a stream or I'm not streaming in a day I thought I would, I actually miss you guys. Like, I literally feel sad that I can't stream. So it's gone from being terrifying to being... A part of my life that I don't want to live without so um, yeah so it does get easier and easier but I do understand being scared and if anybody has any questions or worries they can always come to me and ask me for help um, we're gonna set up Monia today with her equipment so that's gonna be fun All right, so we are pretty much there. I'm missing some chat. I'm sorry. Hi, Louise. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I 
think I missed some stuff. Sorry guys, hold on, let me scroll back up. Um, yeah, there's three colors in the sky. Yep, Bella, you've got it. Um, it's subtle, but it's definitely there. I see it more to my, like, to my eye than, than the camera sees it. Which is interesting, but the joys of camera. Let's fix that too. So any little areas where we went over, you can fix it with this white paint as well. Yeah, that fine spray really gave us a good jump start, gave us so many stars. I can't imagine how long it would take to paint them all by hand, but I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> okay. I think maybe big one there, some little smaller ones. Okay, let me zoom out, just so you guys can kind of get a sense of what's happening here. So there's what we have so far. And uh, I'm just looking over and making sure I didn't miss any spots that I needed to fix, like this guy here. And this guy here, where we went over the lines a little bit. You can just kind of paint back in with some white. Yeah, the rest of it looks fine. Okay, so um, the next session we're going to be using polychromos and I think we will start on the metal most likely, but we'll see we'll see um, what I'm feeling like doing. Um, so yeah, just make sure after you're done your session to make sure all your brushes are nice and clean. So I'm actually going to go over all the brushes that I used and just clean them out with um, cool water and soap. I have brush soap. It works great. Um, I will put links in the description with all of the materials that I used today. So that way if you need to go buy something on Amazon, you can just um, grab those links. So I would just wait about an hour or two after the after the video is done processing and I will make sure to have those links put up for you guys um, let's see does anybody have any questions before we take off um, oh thank you Michelle hi Michelle and I know that we have this glitter let me see what it looks like. Let me see if I want to use this. Oh my gosh, it is so glittery. I don't know, guys. Let me let me paint a little of this on my. Um. No questions, guys. I think I'll wait till the end to decide. I have this glitter paint that I'm kind of wanting to use, but I don't know if it's going to take away from the main focus. I think I'll wait until the end and add glitter at the end, which is what I usually do anyway. Okay, I'll wait for that. But we have it. We have it in stock. No questions. I guess not. Okay, if you do have questions and I miss them, just go ahead and post in the comments below. I always answer my questions and um, I'm really happy. If I miss something, I'm happy to uh, fix that <laughs> in the comments below. And I'm just going to give a shout out and then we're going to get going. So we have here... Hi, Kenny. Thanks for coming and modding for me. And we have Bo. Bo, don't worry, we're all behind you. <laughs> uh, 
Alright, hi Michelle, thanks for coming by. Um, we have Louise, thank you for coming. Shannon, thanks for modding for me, honey. We have Joanna, thanks for coming. Uh, who else is here? Michelle, thank you so much. Thanks for the thumbs up. <laughs> thank you, Leslie. Who else is here? We've got Louise. I think I may have said that. Thank you, Bella. I'm glad you like the background. Um, let's see here. Do do. I'm just reading through the chat, trying to find any new people. Connie, thanks for coming, and Darla. And uh, let's see who else. Cassandra was here. I think she's gone now, though. Thank you for coming anyway. Uh, hi, Lulu. Bye, Lulu. <laughs> Sorry, I missed you coming in. Um, thanks for coming, though. And, of course, Monia, I'll get in touch with you shortly, and we'll uh, get you started on your webcam setup. Um, who else is here? I'm just paging through. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love hanging out with you guys. Um, so yeah, next week on Tuesday, we're going to start in with polychromos. So um, get your pencils sharpened. We are going to have some fun with metal and flowers. Um, and yeah, uh, later on this week on Friday, I'll be streaming along with a bunch of other streamers um, on uh, the February event. So um, if you're looking for the schedule, you can find it here. And um, there will be a lot of new artwork on sale. If you're looking for more information, let me see if I can find it really quickly on Facebook. There is a February <laughs> All right. uh, here it is. There's a page where you can go and find all the news. So if you go to that page, you can see the artists that are going to be um, featured and also um, just a lot of other information about um, like giveaways and, and other news. So um, yeah, I hope you guys had fun. Thank you so much for coming and have a wonderful day and a wonderful magical time coloring. Bye.